Lax out, lax out, lax out, lax out, lax out, lax out. home we're gonna kick this off send her home let's hear it send her home there you go you guys we have a great program starting we're gonna have utah attorney general sean reyes kick off the program he's right here give him a warm welcome ladies and gentlemen hi how are you all doing tonight let me hear you come on yeah i know it's cold out here but it is warm inside that bus they're coming, they're so excited, but we're gonna kick this off so that we got some momentum when the general gets here. I'm in my third term in the, in, as the AG and I had the honor of serving with Adam for four years. He is a warrior, I love him, he's a brother. I've been traveling all around America to make sure we get all of our brothers and sisters, our warrior brothers and sisters elected. And uh, I, got a, I got a fight in Utah with my senator uh, to make sure that Mike Lee wins. But I said, but I said, Senator Lee, I gotta come down and do this event for Adam. He said, go do it. I'm so grateful that you all are here and we've got some rock stars. We have a ton of them lined up tonight, all here for Adam to make sure that we get him into the United States Senate. Boy, 
Everybody in America is saying this is the most important race in America for control of the Senate. You know that. I know that. That's why you're here. So without further ado, let me kick off somebody or kick this off with someone that I hope you know. He's our GOP nominee for lieutenant governor. He had a distinguished career with the Las Vegas Police Department, earned the rank of captain. So I call him Captain. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause? He's a city councilman, mayor pro tem here for Stavros Anthony, Captain Anthony. City Council. So the, the question that I get the most uh, when I'm running for Lieutenant Governor is the question that I asked when I was thinking about running for Lieutenant Governor, which is, what the heck does the Lieutenant Governor do? Yeah. I didn't know. I was thinking about running. I had to actually look it up. I did. So I want to let you know what a Lieutenant Governor does and how the Democrat and the Lieutenant Governor during the last two years have treated that particular responsibility. So number one, the Lieutenant Governor is the Chairman of the Tourism Commission. So I will be responsible for promoting tourism throughout the state of Nevada. I've been doing that on the Las Vegas City Council for 13 years. How did the Democrats feel about tourism? They shut it down two years ago. They destroyed our tourism industry, put thousands of people out of work devastated families. That's how they treat tourism. We're going to promote tourism. We're going to create jobs. Uh, number two is the uh, lieutenant governor is the vice chair of the Transportation Commission. So I will be responsible for promoting a robust transportation system in the state of Nevada. How do the Democrats feel about uh, transportation? They're screwing up our supply chains. Gas is at five, six dollars a gallon. They're trying to force us to drive these electric vehicles. I mean, if you want to drive an electric vehicle, God bless you, but they're trying to force us into doing that. That's how they treat transportation. We're going to treat it differently. We're going to promote it. Uh, number three, the lieutenant governor runs a small business advocacy department, so I will be promoting small businesses by reducing taxes, fees, regulations, and licensing requirements. That's how Republicans do it. How do, what do Democrats feel about small businesses? They shut them all down two years ago. They decided what was essential, what was not essential. Almost 100,000 businesses that they shut down two years ago never came back. Those families were devastated. That is very tragic. That will not happen under us. That will never happen under us. We're going to promote uh, small businesses. Number uh, four, the uh, lieutenant governor is responsible for homeland security. So I will be traveling all over the state of Nevada supporting and talking to our police chiefs and our sheriffs to find out what they need from the state to police their communities, to make sure that we have safe communities. How do the Democrats feel about policing? They hate us. They hate us. They call us uh, stormtroopers. They call us racist. They pass policies that try to defund the police. They pass policies that promote the criminals and not law-abiding citizens. They have an open border that we're going to hear about a lot more where criminals are just pouring into this country. It's absolutely tragic. We're going to change that on Tuesday. We're going to support law enforcement. We're going to keep our community safe. And then finally, the, uh, the uh, lieutenant governor is the president of the Senate during the legislative session. So I will be supporting constitutional conservative values like school choice, parental freedom, the Second Amendment, fixing our election integrity issues that we have a lot of today, we're going to fix that, and a lot of other ones. So with that, 
All I can tell you is if you go to Greece, everybody's first name is Stavros. Here in Nevada, I am the only one. Stavros Anthony for Lieutenant Governor. Thank you and God bless all of you. Well done, Captain. How about another hand for Captain Anthony? Ladies and gentlemen, awesome. Now, I want to practice something so that when the bus gets here, if you hear the name, I have to say it, but if you hear the name Catherine Cortez Masto, you know that you know the chant, four more years? Let's do no more years. Let me hear you with me. No, no more years. years. Come on. No, no more years. years. No, no more years. I think you're getting it. I think you're getting it. Okay, so so that's our that's our little secret. When Adam comes, when I'll come, if, they, if anybody says that, that's what I want you guys to start doing. I, I really am excited. Look at this. Well, who is the youngest that we have here in the audience. I saw a young man right here. Come here, come here. What's your name? What, what's your name? Connor. Connor, how old are you, Connor? You're eight? Are you sure? You're not 16? You have a girlfriend, Connor? No. If you do, just get rid of her. A uh, waste of time right now. Connor, thank you for being here. I know Adam Laxall, and I know the fight that he always had to protect young people and children and families. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. I see you have a cool Sam Peters shirt, and that's who I'm going to be introducing next. How about a round of applause for Connor, eight years old? And here we have the buses. Who's our most senior person here that we have? Anybody? 70 years or so, right here? 65? 45? 85? Wow. I think we'll give that to you. Round of applause is coming. You can feel it. Lax salt. Little louder, I don't think you can hear you. Lax salt. Lax salt. Lax salt. Lax salt. Yes. Adi, before we bring Sam up, you want to? You need a moment for some photography and everything coming off off the bus, or do you want me to just keep going? All right, Sam, we're going to bring up somebody who, ladies and gentlemen, is a hero from the United States Air Force, a Bronze Star recipient, earned the rank of Major. He is fighting for you here in Nevada to take that 4th District seat for Congress. So let me bring up a fighter and a patriot, Mr. Sam Peter. Sam, come on up and address the crowd today. Let's do it. Folks, I'm going to be brief because the man of the hour is here. In fact, I just so I just got surrounded by a bunch of heroes. Yes, we did. I'm going to be brief. So I am Sam Peters. I'm running for Congress here, right here in District 4. Welcome to the district. Tuesday is our last chance. And Tuesday is going to be the biggest red, red wave Nevada has ever seen. Am I right? We're going to win all four congressional seats. And we're going to create the 51st senator for the United States of America. Again, I'm going to be brief. I've been running on three things. Illegal immigration, fixing the southern border, and I'm going to stop talking about that a little bit because the guy who's going to talk next is, going to, is, is the man of the hour in that regard. Debt and spending, the, the amount of inflation that's been happening, the, the, foreign, the money that this federal government has been spending across the globe while it's been ignoring the United States citizens it's responsible for is just abhorrent. We need to knock it off. The government overreach, I was talking to my friend Martin, where are you at, Martin? There he is. We're talking about the federal government overstepping their bounds as far as small business owners. And the destruction they've done, we heard it from Stavros Anthony, the destruction they've done to our economies, our jobs. When you talk to people, when you talk to constituents in this district, then they start telling you they can't afford a dozen eggs because it's $6. They can't afford a gallon of gas because it's over $5. Biden did that. They, Biden did do that. And you know who else did that? 
the complicit Congress that hasn't been holding him in his check as they're supposed to do constitutionally. That changes on Tuesday, November 8th. It does it with your help. And then... <laughs> holding this government is account accountable is something that I will be glad to do. Just as if, if you saw it this past Monday when I had a press conference and I held Stephen Horsford accountable. Who saw that? <laughs> Stephen Horsford feels it's appropriate to bully, intimidate, and try to extort his wife. So I called him out on it. He, he also threatened violence to his wife, according to his wife, and I called him out on it. You know what he did in response? He said he wanted to take me out back. I'm going to leave it alone, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm not intimidated. I'm not going to let him do it. And we're going to take him out of office in, on Tuesday with your help. Again, my name is Sam Peters. I'm running for Congress in District 4. Thank you so much. One more time, Major Sam Peters, ladies and gentlemen. Give a big round of applause. We have Captain Anthony, Major Peters, and General Laxalt, who just came in. We're so excited. We are going to keep it going right now. Another hero down at the border, National Border Patrol Council. He is currently a border agent and, uh, and a rock star. So I'm going to bring up Brandon Judd. Brandon, come on out. Thank you. Thank you. Rock star. You know, it, it's funny because every single time I come and I, and I talk at events, um, I can see myself on TV, on Fox News, and, and let me tell you, I'm good looking. As long as you're looking straight on. Now, when you get the profile, a little bit different. A little bit different. So, so Adam, Adam promised me that everybody would be looking at me straight on. So, thank you, Adam. Look, in, in my worst nightmares, I would have never imagined that we would be in the situation that we're in today. My worst nightmares. We have seen an increase in illegal immigration that is astronomical. We should be apprehending somewhere between 30 to 40,000 people every single month in a typical year. Typical, 30 to 40,000. Right now, it's over 200,000. We've had nearly a million what we call gotaways, people that have entered the country illegally and have been able to evade apprehension. That's based upon this administration's policies. And there's a senator that's complicit, and that's Cortez Masto. That's why we have to have people like Adam Laxalt. I'm here from Arizona. I'm here from Arizona. I have never involved myself in Senate races outside of the state of Arizona, Texas, and on the southwest border until we've been seeing what's, what's been happening on the border. We felt it was absolutely necessary to get involved in these important races to ensure that we have the proper policy. And this policy doesn't cost you a penny. You should not have to burden, shoulder the burden of what's taking place on the border today. If we have the proper policy, we have the technology, the resources, and the infrastructure to secure the border, to keep your family safe. And that's what Adam is going to bring to the table. If he wasn't, I wouldn't be here. But I happen to know that this man is going to do what is necessary in the Senate to bring control to the southwest border so that you don't have to deal with the fentanyl crisis that we're seeing every day. You won't have to deal with the criminal aliens. You won't have to deal with the aliens from special interest countries, Uzbekistan, Senegal, Afghanistan, you name it, we're dealing with it. Eritrea, Bangladesh, Senegal, you name the countries and we're dealing with it. And that is a serious problem. And that's why we have to have somebody like Adam Laxalt. Adam. Thank you so much, Brandon. So we got Arizona, we have Utah, we have Wyoming, Iowa, D.C. We're all here because this is the most important Senate race in America. We are here for Adam Black. So ladies and gentlemen, look at that sunset. What is that? That is a big red wave. And Adam Black is going to be leading that as the next senator of this great state. Let me introduce somebody who, now we've had amazing folks there. This is the undercard. We're in 
the UFC territory here. My good friend Michael Buffery loves to say it's time, and it's time to bring some of the heavyweights out. The main event, the main card, our next guest served as national security advisor. Before that, the special envoy for hostage affairs for President Trump and the United States of America. He is soft-spoken, but he carries a big, big stick, ladies and gentlemen. He helped us negotiate the Abraham Accords, and he helped us lead the strike against Hassan Soleimani there, the Iranian, to take him out. Because when people threaten America, we need people like Adam Laxalt and our next guest, Robert C. O'Brien, our ambassador, to fight back and strike back. So, Ambassador O'Brien, will you come on out? You're, you're next up. Senators, but we're going to have a Republican Senator in a neighbor state. Adam, Adam, we can't wait to get in the Senate. I, I told Adam my first job as an 18-year-old intern in 1984 was working at the RNC, and his grandfather, a great Nevada, maybe, maybe the greatest Nevada politician, Paul Axel, that was your Senator, and now we're going to send his grandson to the Senate. It's going to be the 51st Republican <laughs> And we're going to take this state back, we're going to take the country back. So it, it, it's time. Now listen, did, did you feel safer when President Trump was president? Yes! Now, let, let, let me tell you, I was in Georgia. We've got another close Senate race in Georgia. I was there two weeks ago, and I drove past the Jimmy Carter Library. And I looked at that library, and I thought, gosh, who would have thought we'd be thinking of the Carter years as the good old days? <laughs> and, but, but, but think about how fast things have gone bad. You know, we, we were energy independent. We've got no energy. We're begging the Saudis, and we're begging the Venezuelans, and we're begging the Iranians, and begging the Russians to send us oil and gas. We're sending envoys and ambassadors to all these places. Why don't we send an envoy to Midland, Texas, yeah, yeah. And, 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 up to, and up to North Dakota and to Wyoming, and, and negotiate with, with Senator Barrasso and get some oil for the country, rather than asking these tin pot dictators for their oil? Yeah. So this thing started with Afghanistan. And it was a catastrophe. It was a catastrophe for the people of Afghanistan. It was a catastrophe for our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, the, the, the 13 soldiers and marine who died at, at the Hamid Karzai airport. It was a disaster when we, we went out with a tail between our legs it, and a horrible evacuation. You know, John Barrasso, Senator Barrasso, and I spent Thanksgiving in 2019 at Bagram Air Base. We were there to serve our troops food, to thank them for their service. You know who's in that cafeteria right now? The cafeteria you guys all bought and paid for? The Taliban is in that cafeteria right now. So then, then it went from Afghanistan to Iran. And in Iran, we had the, we, we got rid of the terrible JCPOA and because the Iranians had been given under the Obama administration $150 billion. And what did they do with it? They spent it on terrorism all over the region. And so we got rid of the JCPOA. And we, and we, we, we were strong against Iran. Now what is Iran doing? They're, they're spewing terrorism all over the region. They're killing Americans in Iraq. They're, they're, they're menacing our friends in Israel, and they're threatening us. And what is President Biden's response? He's asked the Russians to negotiate a deal with the Iranians to get us back into the JCPOA. That's what's happening in Iran. Ukraine, did, does anyone here think that, that Vladimir Putin would have invaded Ukraine if Donald Trump was president? Hello. Hello. Does anyone think that Xi Jinping would be threatening to take over Taiwan Hello. If, if Donald Trump was president? So what can we do right now? Right now, we can send a message to our adversaries. We can send a message to our adversaries by electing Paul Laxalt, or Adam Laxalt. Sorry about that. that, that that's not an insult. That's a compliment. That, that we can send Adam to be the 51st Republican senator. He can, he can vote to appropriate the, the funds we need to our military so they can keep us safe every day of the year. He's a veteran. country in the Navy as a JAG officer. Now, I was an Army JAG officer, so it's go Army, beat Navy. But other than that, it was terrific. And, and he served in Iraq, but he loves our veterans. A lot of you here have served. A lot of your kids have served. Your, your parents have served. When when Paul was the Attorney General, uh, he, he started off with Paul. You, you don't know if your grandfather has gray hair. I should know that. So, so when Adam was Attorney General here, he started a division of the Attorney General's office 
that dealt with military affairs and took care of our veterans. That's how much she loves our veterans. I, I appreciate that as a vet. I know you, you guys do as well out there. So let me finish up by saying God bless America. God bless all of you. And when you get out to vote on Tuesday, bring friends with you. Don't just do it yourself. So. Thank you, Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you. I how powerful it is. You can share the spirit of Paul Laxalt. Stand right there. Next to General Adam Laxalt. We love it. Thank you. Our next speaker stood also with President Trump before Merrick Garland started abusing the Department of Justice and calling you parents domestic terrorists. We had a real leader there for the Department of Justice, our acting United States Attorney General. He was a superstar football player. Tonight he's blocking and tackling for our superstar Adam Laxalt. Let me bring out Matt Whitaker. Come on, Whit. I came all the way out here to join this bus tour to support my good friend Adam Laxall. When he was the Attorney General here in Nevada and I was at the Department of Justice, I knew I could rely on him to do the blocking and tackling of law enforcement, to protect his communities, to protect the citizens of this great state, to put bad guys in jail for a long time, to end human trafficking, to reduce drug trafficking, and quite frankly, to make sure that every child could play safely in their front yard here in Nevada. Yeah. But you know what? We have to be ever vigilant. And it's time now to restore law and order in Nevada and in our great country. We need the rule of law restored. And do you think that Senator Cortez Masto is going to restore the rule of law? No, Adam Laxalt is going to restore the rule of law. No more years. 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 This Senator Cortez Masto has voted for every bad policy idea of the leftists whether it's to spend trillions of dollars on green edge energy pipe dreams, or whether it's to spend money on their pet projects for their political benefactors, at the end of the day, we are less safe, less prosperous, with a dimmer future in Joe Biden and Senator Masto's United States of America. But the great thing, is we learned that with a change in the leadership in Washington, D.C., we can turn this whole thing around. And that's why I'm joining all of you in supporting Adam Laxalt. I can't vote for him. I'm going to vote for my home state, Senator Chuck Grassley. But I can ask you and implore you to not only vote for Adam Laxalt, but do more now than you've ever done. Because now is the time. Now is the time to restore sanity to Washington, D.C., to put a real rule of law conservative in the U.S. Senate, and to make sure that your children's future and your grandchildren's future is brighter than yours. This generation, it is on us. Now is the time. Let's do it. Vote Adam Laxalt. That's Whit, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Whitaker. Can you feel the power? Well, speaking of power, our next speaker has got a lot of it. He served as the ambassador to Germany, director of national intelligence. He has served in so many capacities as a patriot standing up for our country. And tonight he's leading this team of Avengers. He's like Iron Man coming up so he can introduce Captain America. Come on, let me have you please put your hands together and bring out another patriot and warrior, Rick Grinnell. Rick. Get out and vote. My friend Adam Laxalt is the best choice. I hope that you will get out and vote. Adam Laxalt, Adam Laxalt, Adam Laxalt. I'm not saying to vote for him three times like the Democrats would, but I am saying get out and vote. You know, the Democrats have a whole bunch of more money than we do. 
it takes a whole bunch of money to try to convince people that we've got normal gas prices. It takes a whole bunch of money to convince people that you don't know the difference between a man and a woman. This is disgusting when you think about it. It's pathetic and it's embarrassing for America. We have a senator in Catherine Cortez Masto who voted, who voted for a Supreme Court justice who when asked, do you know the difference between a man and a woman? She said, no, I'm not a biologist. That is ridiculous. What the left has done to so many issues, they've turned this whole issue in Florida into a don't say gay bill. That is so crazy and so wrong as a gay man, what I can tell you, it should be called don't be creepy bill. If you wanna to talk to a kindergartner about sex and you're not their parent, you should probably be investigated. You're a creep. Don't drag the gay community into this. You're a creep. And also, never apologize for wanting a closed border. You are the most generous people in the history of the world when it comes to immigration. We give roughly a million people a year. And by the way, we've got a lot of fake news media here today. You should talk to first and second generation Americans and you will see people who love this country. And the problem that we have in this country is the fifth, sixth, seventh generation white liberals who are teaching their kids to hate America. I got one message for them. Get a passport and travel. You will find that this is the greatest country in the history of the world and no one should ever apologize. Adam Laxalt is our choice. If you vote in Nevada, you have to get out and vote. You have to take as many people with you. I'll finish with this. The great Ronald Reagan told us that every generation has to fight for their freedom. I see a lot of vets in this audience. People who, who stood up and took the challenge to defend this country. But Ronald Reagan said that every single person has a moment where they have to fight for this country. We're at a road that is diverging. You don't get to leave here today and hope that somebody else does something. You have to do something. You have to take people to the polls. And on Tuesday, I want you to take out your phone and call everybody you know that's a conservative and say, did you vote? If you didn't vote, go get them. Take them to the polls. That's what you can do to save your country. You must do something. Do not just sit here and expect somebody else to do it. You'll lose your country. This is why we are fighting. This is why we're all here. And I am so honored to be here with the best conservative warrior that we have in the U.S. Senate. Someone who traveled from Wyoming to be here. He doesn't need to be here. He's a very powerful man. And yet he knows that this country is at a moment. We are so honored to have this warrior here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the great Senator John Barrasso. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for standing with us and standing with Adam Laxall. with the former Attorney General, Director of National Intelligence, Director of National Security. They're all here not to impress you, but to impress upon you how critical this race is for the nation and our history. And we just heard, this is, the fi this is it. If you're into basketball, this is the final four days. If you're into football, it's the two-minute warning. If you're into baseball, it's the ninth inning. We all have a job to do. Now, I'm from Wyoming, the equality state, and like all of us here, we believe in the American dream. It's about opportunity for all. Equal opportunity, not equal outcome. It's based on effort, not existence. And the whole role of the Democrats is to grow the government. It's our goal to grow the economy. The word they live by is government. 
and what we live by is freedom. Well, I don't know how many of you saw the president's speech the other night. To, to me, it was like a remake of that 1990s film, Clueless. He, I'll tell you, he never mentioned the word inflation. Never word, mentioned the word economy. Never went, mentioned the word border. Never mentioned the word crime. None of it. He talked about none of it. He said, this election is about democracy. This election is about holding the Democrats and Catherine Cortez Masso accountable for the damage that they've done to this country. I'm the ranking member of the Energy Committee, and Catherine Cortez Masto is on that committee. Who knew? In the last 22 months, this administration, the House, the Senate, and the White House, have taken us from energy independence and dominance to energy dependence. We can't have that. In 22 months, they have brought 40-year high inflation, gas prices at least a dollar and a half more per gallon. You know, inflation was non-existent at the end of the Trump years. Gas was two to a dollar and a half cheaper. Our border was secure. Crime was much better under control. And they need to be held accountable. And the way to do that is with 51 Republican senators. Now, I'm hoping for 53 or 54, but I want to be here for number 51. And we have him right here. With Adam Laxalt, we all will have someone who will stand with you, who will work for you, and who will fight for you in Nevada every day and for this great country. Thanks so much for letting you join you. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Laxalt. We got some late breaking news. Someone is coming to the state to try to rescue Catherine Cortez Masto. Joe Biden is coming to Nevada. No, 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 I'm kidding. Of course he's not coming to Nevada. She is hiding Joe Biden, and they've been hiding Joe Biden for a few months now. He actually came all the way out west and he skipped Nevada. Why did he skip Nevada? He skipped Nevada because Senator Masto has spent a record $100 million attacking me, lying about her record, and trying to deceive Nevadans that somehow she's an independent. And she did, never even met this guy, Joe Biden. She has voted, but I should add, she had all the summer, as soon as we started getting our message out, that she has voted with Joe Biden almost 100% of the time, what did you see? You saw 10 consecutive polls with us leading in this race. Because she has been a rubber stamp of Joe Biden. She has supported his agenda every step of the way. Let me tell you, if she really was an independent, do you know how much she could have done for our 3 million person state? She had the 51st vote. She could have given us our a lands bill, which she did not give. She could have helped with our water. She could have extracted things for that 51st vote. But you know what? She did, he didn't need to extract anything. She was an automatic vote. She had the opportunity eight weeks ago when we already had record inflation in this state. Not the 8% nationally, 16% here. You all live, are living it. You all know how expensive things are. She had the opportunity to break from Joe Biden and her party. She had the opportunity to be the independent, she pretends. Her vote was not even up for debate. Senator Barrasso, was, it, was there a big debate on whether, whether Catherine Cortez Masto was gonna vote against the inflation bill? She was a bobblehead. <laughs> she voted for the Inflation Reduction Act, all-time spending, all-time inflation, and, and when we were experiencing almost $6 gas, by the way, some of the media kept writing these stories that 
gas is is decreasing in Nevada. You know, the last few weeks, trying to like help Democrats. It went from 555 to 547. Big headlines. It's going down. We have all-time gas. We all know it, and and no one has paid this much for gas anywhere in this state. Do we have to go back to 1982 for two dollar gas? 1988? No, we go to 2020. We had two dollar gas in this state. Two dollar gas. Wouldn't it be nice to get back to two dollar gas right now? And the bottom line is, this isn't Putin's price hike. This isn't greedy oil executives. This isn't private citizen Adam Laxalt's fault as the commercial seas run. This is Joe Biden policies that she supported every step of the way. Day one, they said they were going to go after our energy independence. Day one, they killed the Keystone Pipeline. They stopped drilling. They killed Anwar. And guess what? Boom. And then they had the nerve to take from our strategic oil reserve simply for election purposes. It's supposed to be for emergencies that aren't politically created. And the second that they stop taking that gas is going right back up because we need to change policy. We're not going to get changed policy out of Captain Cortez Masto. No chance on earth. How about our border? First of all, thank you to Brandon Judd for coming in. Right? about this, in all the years of this, of our statehood, we have never ever had a race where the Border Patrol has endorsed in the U.S. Senate race. They endorsed me in this Senate race because they know I'm going to be serious about securing this border. I went to the border eight weeks ago. I went with them. And it is far worse than you'll see on the one television station that actually shows what's going on on the border. And I also know all the local law enforcement, and they are getting overrun. You remember the news from just two weeks ago? Six fentanyl deaths in 24 hours. That is because of an open border. She has the nerve to run commercials to pretend like she's, you know, fighting against human trafficking. She needed to do one thing to stop drug trafficking and human trafficking. Flip from her party and support a secure border. And I'll end with the one that's near and dear to my heart. What has happened to our law enforcement? And you know, the media still won't really cover it, but what, the, what they've done to our police starting in 2020 by attacking them, by demeaning them, and you know, the entire Black Lives Matter movement, calling all cops systemically Damn, racist, was, a, was such a shameful episode in American history. Our cops still feel it. We're losing all-time recruitments. People will not join the force. People are retiring in droves. And they're still acting like they have no idea why crime is rising. Democrat policies, no bail, which Steve Sisolak gave us here in Nevada. No bail, reduced sentencing. All these things increase crime. And we're feeling it in our great state. This is one of the main reasons, if you hear that the Latino voter has moved 30 points to my direction this race, because of yeah. So folks, we know what it's like to live in a blue state the last few years. We know what it was like to have Governor Steve Sisolak shut down this state to give us mask mandates, shut down our businesses, shut down our schools, our churches. Meanwhile, the casinos are open the whole time, and we're still waiting for the science on that. And the media is still hasn't asked where the science is on that. And if they did, we would have gotten these things open. But all these things, we still feel these things. And they are just, the Democrats are all about power. And we cannot let them bully the American public, cancel us, and intimidate us. And you see all these polls over the last few months where they kept saying there's no red wave, and it's going to be okay, the Democrats are actually going to hold serve. And I, of course, never believed that for a second. But a lot of the reason is because none of you would participate in a poll, right? No one was going to participate in a poll because what you all were waiting for is the chance to make your voice heard. The chance to actually prove that democracy still works by showing up to vote on November 8th.
So folks, we got one last shot to save our great state. And I'll tell you, early vote looks amazing. Republicans are turning out, Democrats are, what do they have to be motivated to vote for? This is our shot. But I don't want to take anything for granted. Today's early vote is done, like right this second. We have one day left Tuesday, and this is our day. Election day is our day. Get out and vote. Get your friends and neighbors out to vote. Do whatever you can. This is our shot to flip our great state. Help me and help all of Nevada. Let's go save Nevada. Let's go save America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a photo in one minute and have you all turn around. We've got to do this quickly so that we can get Adam. Uh, he's got an interview to do. So let's let's get you up here. Let's, uh, let's make sure it stays the right way. Let's put all of the, the big guns up. Adam, you're in the middle. Right here, folks. We're looking right here. Our photographer's back there. Right here. Photographer is right here. Be careful. There you are. All right, let's go back a little bit. And get real cozy. We're going to keep the rally going while you're standing here. This way. Got the rain bottles down. Throwing a shock in here for all the Polynesians and Asian Pacific Islanders who are joining here. Relax all tonight. All the Latinos and Spanish, everybody. All races for Trump or for Lax. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been to too many of those events here. Back here. You guys good? Are we set? All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Lax out for Senate. Good, you're good. Yeah. Right, let's go win. Thank you. All right, they're getting on the bus, ladies and gentlemen. You guys are welcome to hang out here and party all night long if you want. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Come visit us in Utah sometime. We love you. Go call all your friends. Everybody. Race. Adam's gonna win, but we need you to get out, get all your friends voting this weekend. Make sure they vote. Guys, take care.